Our last episode closed with the Third Army's bold maneuver of deploying three divisions northward in an audacious bid to smash the German southern flank, a plan hatched in the historic town of Verdun on the 19th of December. The narrative now takes us to Arlon, Belgium, where on the 20th of December, General George S. Patton, the indomitable force behind the Third Army, rendezvoused with his old comrade, General Troy Middleton, the commander of the Eighth Corps. In a moment charged with intensity, Patton, ever the fiery personality, exclaimed, Troy, of all the goddamn crazy things I've ever heard of, leaving the 101st Airborne to be surrounded in Baston is the worst. Middleton, unshaken and ever analytical, countered his old friend. George, just look at the map with all the roads converging on Baston. It is the hub of the wheel. If we let the Krauts take it, they will be in the Moose in a day. His words painted Baston as not just a town, but a linchpin in the Allied defense. A realization that dawned on Patton with crystal clarity, and he agreed that Baston should be held at all costs. By the 21st of December, Baston was encircled, a siege that heralded the 4th Armored Division's critical role in what was to become a relentless counteroffensive. The 22nd would mark the beginning of their attack, a classic movement to contact under a veil of uncertainty regarding the strength and disposition of the German forces arrayed against them. This is Battle of the Bulge, Episode 14, Movement to Contact. Major General Hugh Gaffey had been the commander of the 4th Armored Division for only a few weeks. But he was no novice, having previously served as Patton's Chief of Staff and commander of the 2nd Armored Division. As per United States Army's doctrine, he organized his division into three combat commands, each built around a tank battalion and an armored infantry battalion. His combat command subordinates were Brigadier General Ernest of Combat Command A, Brigadier General Dager of Combat Command B, and Colonel Wendell Blanchard of Combat Command Reserve. Combat Command B had spent most of December 19th on the road, driving more than 160 miles through France to Belgium. The lead elements left cutting France early on the morning of December 19th and arrived in vaux les rosiers Belgium, at 8 p.m. on the same day, without encountering any German forces. Then on the morning of the 20th, an urgent message from Major General Middleton threw preparations into disarray. With the 101st Airborne nearly surrounded in Bastogne, he ordered CCB to fortify the city. Amidst this urgent request, confusion reigned. Did CCB belong to 8th Corps, or did it belong to the 3rd Corps? Dagger asked Middleton to wait until he could establish contact with his boss, General Gaffey, but to no effect. With no alternative, Dager gave Major Alban Irzik the mission to take a task force to Bastogne. Major Irzik, commander of the 8th Tank Battalion, cobbled together a force comprising a medium tank company, an armored infantry company, and a battery of self-propelled howitzers, placing it under the command of his executive officer, Captain Bert Ezel. The task force soon departed, and unhampered by enemy action, made it to the center of Bastogne. Once there, Captain Azell began coordinating with Colonel William Roberts of the 10th Armored Division. The mission took an abrupt turn when Major Irzik, amidst the chaos, was instructed by Dager to recall Task Force Azell. In no uncertain terms, Azell was ordered to disengage and return, a decision met with understandable reluctance and confusion, causing the troops to ponder what clowns were running this circus. Without a shot being fired, Task Force Azell would reunite with Combat Command B that evening. It would take a week of bitter fighting before they would occupy the same piece of ground. As the main effort, General Ernest's Combat Command A boasted the 35th Tank Battalion with over 40 operational Shermans and the 51st Armored Infantry Battalion. Attached to the command was Able Company, 24th Engineers and Able Company of the 704th Tank Destroyer Battalion, all supported by the thunderous might of the 66th and 274th Armored Field Artillery Battalions. Ernest would create two maneuver task forces, one under Lieutenant Colonel Odin and the other under Major Alanis, 
veterans who had been with the division from its inception. The mission was clear. Advance under the cover of darkness to a position north of Arlon, and at first light advance, find the enemy, and destroy him. On the morning of the 22nd, both task forces came to an abrupt halt. Retreating American engineers had blown the bridge south of the village of Holtz and cratered the road along the main highway between Arlon and Martelange. General Ernest ordered the two task forces to combine and advance up the main road once bulldozers had filled the crater. Having filled in the crater, Combat Command A inched closer to the urban maze of Martelange. Understanding the peril tanks faced in an urban setting, infantry led the assault on the town. It gained a foothold but was pinned down by machine gun and mortar fire. At nightfall, the tanks went in and the stalemate ended with the GIs in control of the town. However, the Germans still controlled the bridge over the Sauer River. To the northwest of Combat Command A, Combat Command B advanced along a secondary road. Just before noon, scouts from B Troop, 25th Cavalry, reported that the bridge over the Sauer was destroyed and that they were under fire. The lead commander, Major Irzik, knew what to do, and he put together a textbook operation for establishing a bridgehead. First, he ordered tanks to provide direct fire support while artillery fire from 54 guns kept the Krauts pinned down. With the far side of the objective suppressed, dismounted infantry surged across the river, securing the far bank. As darkness closed in, the infantry occupied Bernan, and Irzik ordered the combat engineers forward. It was now just a matter of time before the attack would continue. While the two lead combat commands of the 4th Armored Division engaged German forces, Intelligence reports indicated that the Führer Grenadier Brigade was moving into the area around Arsdorf, which, if true, would allow it to exploit the gap between the 4th Armored Division and the 26th Infantry Division. This discovery triggered orders for Colonel Blanchard's Combat Command R to seize Bigginville the next morning, the 23rd of December. Despite the slow start, the 4th Armored Division's leadership was still optimistic and confident of success. Its Combat Command B was already across the Sauer River and would soon have a bridge operational. Combat Command A was clearing martelage and engineer units were advancing to begin erecting a bridge. Unless the Germans blocked their advance, the 4th Armored was poised to reach Bastogne in the next 24 hours. The terrain, weather, and the German army would make that a forlorn hope.